30 seconds. Ow! Lovely. One more time. You're listening to the worst marathon ever. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the That Gets My Goat's Second Worst Marathon Ever. Big Anklevich here. And I'm Rashad Fielder. We're continuing the list of Pixar storytelling rules. I think we're on number 14. 14 it is. The rule is, why must you tell this story? What's the belief burning within you that your story feeds off of? That's the heart of it. You can't know why they picked it. What the belief is at the center of it? I don't know. What would the belief be at the center of Toy Story? Kid, the toys are for fun? <laughs> I toys love you back? <laughs> I, uh... That you should always be there for Andy when he needs you? It might be. I I don't know. The, the, the thing that comes to mind for me is you create a universe like Monstropolis. Uh, any number of stories could be told about monsters, about a city where everybody is a monster. So you're like, okay, what particular story? Why do I need to tell this particular story about a human child coming in and a monster falling in love with a human child, right? Uh-huh. That's what that movie is about. Or, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's not what it's about. Because nobody ever talks about Boo. It's always Mike and Sully. So maybe it's about two best friends that are both monsters, and I, I don't know. I, what? I don't think that's what it's about. Uh, I think it's much more uh, Sully and Boo that are the uh, the characters that you know the, the the fact that it ends with Sully finally getting to go back to Boo's room. They finally reassembled all the slivers of the door and he gets to go in there and hear us say kitty and the big smile on his face as the last shot I think gives you the feeling that that's the heart of it that's the center of that film and maybe it's just I mean one of the things that you get with every Pixar film is the list of production babies which, which I you know, know I you despise. Oh, I loathe it. But I assume what that means is that all these people that work for Pixar, a lot of them are parents. And so a lot of these movies that they make are about though that bond, that connection. And Sully and Boo are basically like a parent and a child. Uh, you've got Nemo and... Marlin, you've got uh, Merida and her mother, who I don't know the name of, I can't think of it. You've got the Incredibles and their family relationship, plus their relationship with their kids, etc., uh, etc. Et Although that may actually be the last of them. <laughs> when I say etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I'm just, I really can't think of more. Well, it, uh, the old man in Up. And the boy. Okay, there we go. He so, becomes a father to that old little boy by the end of the movie. Yeah, so et cetera, et cetera was fair to say then. So they do that a lot, so it seems like that must be one of the things that they really like. One of the stories that they really want to tell. What's the, the belief that... What, what did she say? Let me look at the rule again. The belief burning within them is something to do with the value of children, uh, I think, in this world. So, yeah, I guess that's something to try to apply to your story, to look at what it is that you have in your mind, and why is it that that seems important to you. Try and figure out what it is so that you can know what matters most, what it is that you need to be saying, what your theme should be. Well, I think it's fair to say that these these rules, these 22 rules, are a lot of what makes the difference between a movie like A Good Dinosaur, The Good Dinosaur, 
and Hotel Transylvania 2. <laughs> um, you know, both of those movies cost a fortune, and they're both CG animated, and they're both aimed at children and families. And, uh, and But, you know, Pixar films tend to have this emotional undercurrent, this emotional base, this thing that resonates within you. Within, they're, they're not just going for a laugh or to pass the time, or to be a 90-minute babysitter, which a lot of animated films are. I mean, they, they don't aspire to be anything more than mindless entertainment for 90 minutes uh, that will, you know, make five times its budget back. And, uh, it, you know, it's not easy to follow all these rules, certainly. Right. And to, to, to have to follow all of them, holy cow, it sounds like such an ordeal to me. There have been a couple that I've ra not railed against. What's the word? I've pushed back against because, like, ugh, I don't want to dismiss the th second, third, and fourth thing that comes into my mind. I have to wait till the sixth idea. Come on! But that might make the difference. But yeah, you, one thing that you talk a lot about, uh, you know, you, you bring the example up here of Good Dinosaur versus Hotel Transylvania Two, which you know you've all seen. Yeah, but I've, we haven't seen. I've seen Hotel Transylvania 1. Okay. Uh, it was alright. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't terrible. The thing that you always say that makes the difference between a Pixar film and the others is the heart that it has. And I wonder if this may well be how you get to the heart of the matter by examining and figuring out what it is that it says because yeah I mean that's what makes the movies really matter what makes them really tick what makes them resonate with people is that that heart how much they care about everything and uh, how lovingly they portray it etc it's not easy to make an audience care about a character, as when, especially when they're just an animated character. Um, you know, a lot of times an actor will bring a certain humanity to their performance, or they have their own baggage of, oh, I really like Al Pacino, or I really like Jennifer Lawrence, or whoever it is. But with the animation thing, that you've really got to struggle, you've got to push a little harder, you have to work a little harder to be anything other than a cartoon, to become a person rather than a cartoon and and yeah it's, it's it's sometimes easy to just say well a cartoon is fine it is a cartoon you know a lot of times it's hard to do animation and it's expensive and you can't afford to put 11 hours into a day especially when you've got a family waiting for you and all that stuff so to be willing to put forth the extra effort you know, that, that shows, I guess, a little bit of, of who works for Pixar and who who cares enough to do that to where, the, you know, okay, maybe they had a production baby, but they never get to see him. Right. There's also just the, the fact of, you know, it takes introspection to understand this kind of stuff, and that's not easy to do. It's not easy to look inside yourself and figure out what it is about yourself that why you like this or that or, or whatever. Um, lots of people go their whole lives without ever uh, really doing anything seriously introspective. So making this a necessity of storytelling is uh, it's interesting and, and definitely more work, more effort than uh, otherwise. So I, I think this rule is interesting. I, I'd like to see if I can figure out how to apply it to something that I write. Um, guess we'll have to see if I can do so. But yeah, I think we've come to the end of this one. I hear you. I don't know that I have more to say, so I think we're going to go ahead and yeah, let's move on send you all on your way. Thanks for listening today, and we'll, we'll be back again tomorrow. I'm Big Ankovic. And I'm Rashad Field. And, uh... Goodbye. <laughs> it was a very introspective ending.
That Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it.